Welcome to Iwood Uncut, an event designer's business podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. I'm so excited for today's podcast episode. I have a very special guest who is an expert in film and photography and has been working in creating beautiful memories for weddings and many other social events. Her name is Alejandra from 914 Photography and Film, and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me here. Thank you for being on today's podcast episode. I'm so excited to go behind the lens to discuss all things that are not seen in the final product of a photo or video. (laughs) We're going to get real and uncut. Here we go. (laughs) Unfiltered like we were talking earlier. Right, right. (laughs) So tell everyone a little bit about your business first, like 914 Photography and Film. You know, what is it exactly that you guys specialize in and you service all of Florida, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, um, I'm Alakandra with 914 Photography and Film. And um, mainly on my website, you'll see weddings, but we do weddings, branding sessions, as well as social events um, all over Florida and destinations as well. I travel as well, and I, I love to travel as well, too. So that's fun. That's a big perk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get to see a lot of the cool places. So that's nice. Okay, great. And a little bit, uh, let's backtrack. So When it comes to wedding photography and film for not just weddings, like you said, social branding events, did you always know you wanted to be in this business? Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, I just I started out taking um, pictures of my daughter when she was born because I was a stay at home mom. And then from there, I went to on to taking photos of friends. And then my sister was like, oh, you should do weddings. And I was like, heck no, I'm not doing any weddings. And then <laughs> I started doing weddings and now I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. What do you love the most about that? Um, really the, the love and the bond that you see between the couple and as well as their friends and families that are there. Like a lot of times you'll get a lot of people that are really tearful and emotional because like they're finally getting married. They've been together so long and then they have fun later. Then they get to the reception and really party and have a good time. For sure. And they're like, everyone's like in that special moment. It's a very Mm -hmm. emotional moment too. And you're like capturing all that. Do you ever cry behind the lens? Like not, not, uh, not to the point where like a tear drops, but it gets like the, my eyes get watery because like some of these vows are really good. They're really heartfelt and thoughtful. And like, they're like, Oh my God. Wow. You, (laughs) it's, it's good. So you're in the right business because I would be waterworks every single time. <laughs> like, I can't do this. And I'm like, <laughs> just tears behind the camera. Tears like bawling my eyes out. So I guess before we just dive into currently your business and all of the success and how you started it, let's backtrack and how you even got to this point of opening your business in photography and film. Yeah, so um, years ago, I was a VPK teacher um, teaching in a preschool. Um, And after I graduated college, I went in and did social work for a little bit. Um, And I love the agency I worked for, love the program that we provided to the families. But after like almost seven years, I just couldn't do it anymore. It's pretty Um, draining. It is. It is very emotional draining. And so I was like, okay, well. Maybe I can just get another job and some do something else. And all the meantime, I was still doing photo and video on the side. Um, and even the thought of going to work for somebody else nine to five. You and, were like, oh, my God, no. Nah, I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I felt like it was draining my soul. <laughs> so, um, so then I was like, OK, well, I'm going to go full time um, doing photo and video and see what happens. So I've been full time. scared at all in the beginning? Of course. <laughs> of course. I have a model. You do just do things scared. Yeah. Like you're you're never going to really get out of your comfort zone being comfortable. You yeah. have to do risky things, things that make you scared. And that's really where you see that growth. So you kind of just throw yourself in there. And I, I want to say I threw myself in there because I was in business for a while before I decided to go. You were full-time. always doing it like on the side, on the side. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now I've been full time two years and, and I love it. At times it's like, oh, my God. But for the most part, it's yeah. I'm happy with my decision. And what led to this point? Well, of course, you know, you're working in the business and you're just like, I'm ready to be my own boss. But what were some of the things that were going through your mind as you're opening your business? Like, what is some of that, like, you know, head noise that we get when we're going to do something that you're like, oh, my God. The head noise never stops, really. (laughs) It never really stops. Um, It's like, will I make enough money? Um, Will I flop? Yeah. Like, will it be something where then I'll, I have to go back to work? Like, that's like my biggest thing. I'm going to have to go back to a nine to five. Um, so I really try my hardest to make it work so that I don't have to go back to my nine to five. And then luckily for me, like, I have a lot of support. 
my my family they support me a lot my husband supports me a lot friends in the industry they refer me a lot and i'm so appreciative of that so every time like oh so and so referred you like a fellow photographer videographer it really warms my heart because like they believe in my work yeah. and enough to refer me out to somebody else no for sure and i think you already have it it's perfect for the business of getting you know into video and photography and working with social events because it's such an emotional experience and you come from an emotional background yeah, yeah. working, you know, in social work and things like that, that, that already is kind of like a perfect fit. And you taking that, that that's amazing what you said. I want to kind of like highlight on that mm -hmm. for sure, because I feel like a lot of our viewers and listeners can relate to that. It's, they're so scared to start something or leave their nine to five, which Honestly, it crosses everyone's mind. Mm -hmm. Like, am I going to have enough money? Yeah. Am I going to be able to do this? But what you said about doing it, even scared, because it's never going to stop. And if you're in your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you're not growing. Yep. Yep. It never stops. <laughs> it never stops. You just have to go for it. Absolutely. Believe in yourself enough to go for it. And did you put your uh, goals at the beginning? Did you give yourself, like, short-term goals and long-term goals? Did you give yourself yeah. a period of, like, if I don't make it by here, like, what's... I didn't do the, if I don't make it by here, <laughs> <laughs> I never did that one. But what I do every, at the beginning of every year is like, I look at my finances from the previous year, how much money did I make? How much money did I make per quarter? And then I'm like, okay, well, I want to do more this year. So this is what, how much I want to bring in this year. This is how much I need to bring in each quarter. And I kind of really break it down like that. That's really good though. Yeah. Most people don't like to even dive into that. They're afraid no. of finances. I don't like it either, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to look at it, but I have to. Yeah. I have to know where I was to see where I'm going. Is this something you learned along the way? I've always like, even in social work, we did budgeting with families. Oh. So like we have to budget. And like, if you're planning for something, you have to see where your money is going to go, where it's going to come from so that you can accomplish whatever you're planning for. So as I kind of like take that into my business. Absolutely. Yeah. And so remember, budget. It's budget. it's yeah. No matter what industry, you need to budget. You gotta budget, especially yeah. as a business owner, mm -hmm. because you can't kind of wait until you get paid to make the next move. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I think a lot of people get that misconception. It's like, oh, I gotta wait. You want to be comfortable in making moves, mm -hmm. so that way you can start making moves for the client while that money's coming in. Yeah, and it's the business is ebbs and flows, right? So like, our slow season here is the summer. I mean, this is hot. It, you yeah, could fry an hot. egg in Florida pavement. Yeah. Like how hot and it is. It's, and so, like, I learned that that was the slower months. So, like, then I had to say, okay, Alakandra, don't spend all your money at the beginning of the year. The slower months are in the summer. So you got to make sure you have that money to carry you through until it picks up again. So it's really, like, looking at the, the patterns in your own business and how to make sure you stay afloat, even if things are slow. That's really important. It's yeah. looking at the kind of like the breakdown of slow season, high season. And that way you watch it. Cause I've heard many business owners that don't kind of do that report review. And mm -hmm. then they're like, Oh, well I got to maybe do some extra work. And yeah. So it's yeah. really important. So now that you decided, you know, you explained to us how you got started what was the beginning steps for 914 photography? Like, how'd you get inspiration for the name? How did you know you wanted to do both photography and film? Because those are two monsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I first started, it, my photography business name was Alacantra Alexandre Photography. And I figured that's a lot to say. My it's name is lot. long. It's 19 letters. Like, I'm <laughs> like, and so. It's a beautiful name, it's but it beautiful. is long. It's very long. It's hard to say. People can't pronounce it all the time. Um, so I wanted something that was easy to pronounce, easy to search for, um, and still represented me. Yeah. So in thinking about it, I, um, I'm from New York, New Rochelle, New York. So their area code there is 914. And that's, I picked 914 because I, I used to always go back and visit yeah. when I was younger. Not so much nowadays, but it's very, it's still home to me. So I wanted that, that part in the business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you got the name 914. And how did you... Once you're, you know, tell me like your first gig oh, at 914. My first, first gig. like wedding, I guess. You my could... first wedding. My first wedding I did for free. Listen, <laughs> it is I did for free. it is key that at the beginning yeah. you do yeah. some free work because it's it, it that's how you start mm -hmm. getting practice and also helping getting noticed because you need work for your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Until this day, that was so long ago. Till this day, I I still love those images. 
Oh, Even though amazing. I did it for free, I still love those images. It was a beautiful backyard wedding. Um, they they had just had a baby. Um, so they got lucky. Yeah. For you. <laughs> Well, it was like a photographer referred me, right? So even though I hadn't had, the only thing I've done since then was like second shooting, like maybe once or twice. So because I'm in this photography group, you know, she put out there, hey, looking for a photographer to do for free. And I was like, hey, well, this is my chance. And she referred me and I enjoyed the wedding. It was very sweet, a very sweet wedding. And every time I look at the pictures, I'm like, I still love those photos. And to highlight a little bit when she says uh, the photography group, you you are literally the I would say someone who has given me confirmation for that because I've heard a lot of people say yeah the Facebook group, but it's so true. You joining a Facebook group that's within your network mm -hmm. of like your industry is so key because like you said they posted a job there and then yep. as you were starting you're like oh this is my perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. So how did you go about it? You're like oh I got a message. I don't remember how I found that group, um, but it's the group that I've been in since the beginning professional. I'm going to mess up the name, Professional Photographers of South Florida or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's, I've been in that group since the beginning of my business, and it has been so helpful because you can go in there and ask questions about things, and they will give you answers. And, of course, the job. It's like a support group. It is It is like a support group. And I'm, I'm a part of a lot of other groups as well on Facebook um, because I do all of Florida, you know, Central Florida, um, more Miami groups. So that way, if any jobs are on there, I can go in there and be like, if it's if it fits my what I'm looking for or fits my brand, then I'll go in there and be like, hey, yeah, I'm available, blah, 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 and get more work in that way. That's amazing. So remember, you guys, joining a Facebook group within your network is it's a amazing. win. Yeah, it is. It is. He it builds is. like that rapport. You build with relationships. Yeah. Network with people, go to their events, speak to people. They get to get to know you. So it's not only just like your work and what you can do, but they also get to know you. So if you're like a crabby person and your work is great, they might not refer you out to anybody. But if you're an amazing person, your work is great or so-so, they might be more inclined to like, oh, let me, let me give her a hand. I'm going to refer them out. So like you really do have to like... Don't be fake, obviously. <laughs> like, like, Keep know, it real. No, yeah, I agree with real. that a Keep thousand real. percent. Yeah. There's so real, many but... fake people in the world yeah. that when you're real, it's refreshing and people mm -hmm. gravitate towards that because you're just you. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it real. But then like, don't don't be an a-hole. <laughs> you know, like, be mindful of these. <laughs> be mindful of these relationships that you're trying to create right. to help and build not only yourself professionally, but your business. Absolutely. And that, uh, I was going to ask you, how did you find your branding? Oh, man. That was all over the place. <laughs> At the beginning, right? Like, That's, yeah. not many people like to share the fact that when you're starting your business, your branding could be a little puzzle mm -hmm. in the sense that it has so many pieces and you're like, it's like a, a mess, right? When yeah. you look at it, because our mind is like, we want this, but then you maybe get inspired by something else. But how did you find like your signature style for your photography and film? Oh, like my editing style or my editing style and then putting that out in your portfolio. I'm yeah. um, really like when you look at other people's work, what resonates with you? Is it like because, you know, you have light and airy. We have um, true to color and then dark and moody. And then in between that, you have like your your more warmer tones, your more brown tones. So I already knew I didn't want like the warm brown tones. Light and airy didn't really speak to me. It's beautiful, but doesn't speak to me. That's what is the light and air? Explain it for those. So it's, like it's, Give us like a cliff note version light and airy would be like a brighter image like a brighter photo of oh. like that scene okay so like true to cut like the the it might just i was gonna say highlights but people <laughs> would know the highlights like the the whites in the picture would be brighter gotcha. right so like your greens wouldn't look as they look green. muted not so much muted just like light like brighter i like so like your true to color like your green will look green how okay. it's supposed to look. You're dark and moody. We're gonna we're gonna play with that shadow. The shadow that's in the scene, we're gonna play with it. It might it's be a little, a little bit darker. Like black. Almost. Yeah. It depends on how deep someone yeah. is dark and moody. Um so the light and airy, although beautiful, I just was like, oh, I don't really I'm not really feeling it. I feel like the true to color only because it's classic. 
I feel like that's a classic thing. Um, it stands the test of time. No one's going to look at it and be like, oh my God, I wish I didn't do this. Not so much for the light and airy, but I would say so much for like the warmer tones, your brown tones, like those really different colors. Right. Um, and then the dark and moody, I will do dark and moody because I love playing with the light and shadow in images. Like if it's there, I'm going to play with it. I don't do it all over the place. It's just subtle. So like I'll take a nice clean image and then if the if it's there, I'll do dark and moody. And what do you see a lot of, like, in terms of your clients, what are they requesting of you most? I don't change my editing style. So that's why it's very important to, like, when someone's searching for a photographer, a videographer, make sure that their editing style matches what you're looking for. Like, I preach that all the time. Because you're you're asking me to change me, like, how I came about doing this. Um, and it might not go down the way you want it to. So I know there are some people out there that will change the editing style based on what you want. I, I just, I prefer not to. So like, if you come with me, this is how it's going to look. So you have like your trademark signature style for your business. And I think it's important what you said, like when uh, clients or even planners are hiring you, that they know that that's kind of the aesthetic, mm -hmm. you know, that's like the signature mm -hmm. aesthetic for your business. But as you're developing it and everything like that, where do you see like trends playing into the photography and film business for weddings because things like TikTok and Instagram, I know <laughs> it's made it like people have these like expectations yeah, and yeah. I don't want to say false expectations, yeah. but they're kind of like, they're different expectations of what it, photography and film needs to look like for weddings because each person, just like a designer, a planner, everyone has their signature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what are some of the things you've seen? I don't hate trends. I don't hate them. Some of them are awesome, like the blurry photo one. Come on, that's classic. We all yeah. took a blurry photo here and there. And was like, oh, that's kind of pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah. so I like that one. I've done it a few times. Like, I don't spray it all over the place because you still need to see what you're doing. Yeah. But it's a nice little, like, oh, okay, this is fun. Um, like the little, the, was it the direct flash one? That doesn't bother me. Um, I would say what what would be like the trends? I mean, if you're trying to look a certain way, like if you if you want your wedding, your photos to be a certain way, but you didn't hire the right people to make sure that it is that way. So like you're you're like, oh, I want to do this and do this, but like your photographer is more candid documentary style, and you want more pose, like you saw on Pinterest. social media or on Pinterest where they're very editorial, but the photographer you hired is not. So Ooh, like you that's have such to a good point right that. there. Yeah. Because it's so true. A lot of people don't realize that that magazine look is called editorial. Mm -hmm. And it's very it's trending a lot right now because mm -hmm. of the mob life aesthetic. I know you see it on TikTok. <laughs> I don't even be on TikTok like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. It will take you down a tunnel. But right now what's trending is the mob wife aesthetic, right? So everyone likes that editorial look, like mm. that black and white, very mm -hmm. crisp kind of design mm -hmm. for their um, photography and film. And then they have the soft girl aesthetic, which is like the light pinks, very girly, bubbly. It like has to match. Yeah, it has so to it has to yeah. match. So you're saying that it's important that when anyone, let's say, is looking for their photographer or even videographer, they look at their work, right? Their portfolio. Yeah, yeah. all of it. Not just what you see on social media. Those are just highlights, right? So, like, on social media, I'm going to pick my favorite photos. And most of the time, my favorite photos is not my couple's favorite photos. Yeah. Like, you know, everybody has the way they want to look or their insecurities are playing a hand. I'm like, this is, like, a gorgeous photo. And I'm like, no. So, <laughs> but I usually post the ones that I like, the ones that speak to me, the ones that speak to my brand, um, to ensure that, that those are the couples that are like, yeah, this is what I want my wedding photos to look like. So if you pick someone that's totally opposite of what you want your wedding photos to look like, you're not gonna be happy. The photographer is not going to be happy because now they're trying to create something that's not true to them. Right. And you're not gonna be happy because it might not be executed in the way that you expect it to be. So it's like, you have to make sure you see not only what's on social media, but what's in their galleries. And most, they will show it to you. You ask for it, they'll show it to you. Yeah. Yeah. And what is the process, let's say I'm like a client, like your bride and groom, or you know, your client that you're doing their special day. Like what are some of the key things you look for in their, like in that interview process? Or even with the planner before mm -hmm. you, cause have you ever, you, and the, mind you, real, <laughs> <laughs> I would uncut. Um, have you ever said no to a job because you're just like not happening? Like, 
I don't think I've said no, like flat out said no. I just think it just worked out that way. <laughs> it just didn't happen. That's a good way of like, putting yeah, it. <laughs> sometimes, a lot of times the the people that you would want to say no to, they want you to bend on what you're offering, how much you're offering it for, what's included in it. And so if you stay steadfast on what you're offering, they're going to go someplace else. Like you might, you might not even have to tell them though. Yeah. Like, oh, can we do this instead of this and this and this and this? And it's like, no, we're not, we're, we're, you're not gonna rearrange my whole structure yeah. for you when you can go find somebody else that will. Like little things I will do. Like, you know, I had, I have a wedding coming up where a rehearsal, no, an engagement session was part of their package. They're not from here, they're from New York. They thought they were gonna be able to come down to do it, they're not. So they asked me, hey, can we exchange that for our rehearsal dinner? Sure. To me, that's not a that's not a, a hard ask because it's like okay, we'll go the two hour engagement session, two hour rehearsal dinner. It's all the same to me. Right. So timing wise. Yeah, something. timing wise, it's all the same to me. So it's like it's it was okay, and that was the only ask. Like if it kept going on and on and on, I probably and I was like, no, no, no. They probably would went someplace else. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So. You haven't had that quite yet, which is good. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> what ha- Has there been any horror stories as you have been doing any photography or film There's and working either with clients <laughs> or planners or anything like that? What has been some very difficult moments that you have had to say patience is a virtue? Patience is a virtue. Well, a wedding day is chaotic, right? Oh, for sure. So, like, we we always want it to go a certain way. And I feel like if a lot of people just understand that it's a live event mm-hmm. and that not everything is going to work out like you planned, they'd be much happier people. Like, um, if, you know, if it rains. And a lot of times I'll be at weddings and it rains and the couple's like, okay, well, it rained. <laughs> We're going to move on with our day. And sometimes people, like, they're devastated by the rain. And it's like, well, we can't control. Especially in Florida. Especially in Florida. Like, we never really know no. what's going to happen. It's so bipolar. We yeah, don't... we don't know. But it, I, I would say just the people. I find the most distressing on wedding days is um, family members and guests that are rushing the couple. Like, yes, I understand you're here to help celebrate them, but let's not rush them. It's their day. They want to enjoy it as well. And I understand sometimes things get behind. So, like, you know, people are hungry, and I've had somebody come in, oh, you got to stop taking pictures. And it's like, well, we just started taking photos. So the couple needs to have their photos more than you need to come in here and sit down and eat. Let's just, can I get 10 more minutes? And this is not like planners or anything. This is like guests. Family members. Family members and guests. Oh, wow. So, like, planners usually understand, hey, the couple has to have their photos. So we're going to do our best. Let's see what we could do in the right. 10 minutes that we have. You know, so it's it's like that. People just, their expectations of what's going to happen in a live event, if it doesn't happen exactly the way they want it to, and they're, they're devastated. And it's really hard, like you said, to even predict with the weather. Like, it, oh, it's yeah. one of those things that, like, it's it's beautiful and sunny right now, but then it's like a thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And we're always so, and I think like we're always so calm because we're used to our weather. Yeah. Like I've become a weather person. I'll be like, okay, let's go on the app and check the Doppler and see what's going to happen. But okay, well, it says it's going to pass by like 530. You know, just get the squeegee and squeegee the floor and yeah. I think we should be okay. And most of the time we're okay. Yeah. Sometimes we already know it's not it's not going to stop. It's just not going to stop. And what are some of the prime shots you look for, like, when you are doing the, like, the must? Like, I'm sure you have your must-take shots. Like, whether it's a cake cutting or the first dance dip, the kiss at the altar. They're all (laughs) (laughs) must-haves. You can't miss any of them, really. Like, you can't miss any of them. What's really important is to let the your photo and video team know. Timeline. Not not only the timeline, but what's included in it, right? So of course you're gonna have your first kiss, but your first dance, first dances don't always have a dip. Are you going to do a dip? Oh, if so, so you have to be how very many detailed. dips? Yeah, we might miss it. If yeah. so, how many? Because we want to be positioned to photograph this dip in the most epic way. Yeah. So if I'm off to the side and you dip, I'm like, oh my god. Then you have a side photo instead of like a full frontal photo of you actually that's such a good person. point and yeah. i'm sure a lot of people miss that like even like putting there like in the song if there's a dip or a special turn or when the you know the cold sparks go off 
these are things they yeah. have. Yeah. Luckily enough, the cold sparks will go off a couple times. So we'll <laughs> we'll catch that. Um, but yeah, if you're doing any special traditions, events that are not normal part of a wedding, you have to let the team know. If not, we we may not get it because we're thinking something else is going to happen. Yeah. So communicate as much as possible with your photo and video team and they will be where they're supposed to be. Oh no, that's a, that's such a good point. I completely missed that. Like it's so true. It's not just oh yeah, five o'clock the first you know the couples dance. Mm -hmm. No, it's like what song and it's like what mm -hmm. like dip or like special turn or she's coming down from a helicopter. Yeah, we need to know all of that. <laughs> all those details. All of, that, all of that. Like I did a wedding in the Bahamas and um, I I, I was flying the drone all day. I was doing video for that wedding. And so with the first dance, it was outdoors. The reception was outdoors. I was like, dang, that would be good to get it on the drone as well. But I was like, I can't leave my cameras behind and then go off and do drone. So I went and I asked the DJ, like this, I wouldn't expect the couple to tell me yeah. this part um, because this wasn't included. This was just something I wanted to do and to add a special little, yeah, yeah. to their video. I asked the DJ, hey, how long are they dancing for? He said the whole song. So I had four minutes. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get cool shots of them dancing first. I'll set up a center camera to continue recording the whole thing, and I'll put this drone up and get like a top-down view yeah. of them dancing. And I was able to. And then still put the drone back and continue doing that. Because four minutes, that's a very long time. So <laughs> it's a very long time. So like, if your first dance is going to be 30 seconds, I need to know. <laughs> like, yeah. Because then, then I know where to position myself. Then I know I can't move around too much, right? Even with ceremonies, it's very important to let us know how long the ceremony is going to be, especially, um, actually, no, both photo and video. Like, if you're going to have a 10-minute ceremony, we're not going to move around that much because we don't want to miss yes. the first kiss. We don't want to be at a different angle than where we're supposed to be for this first kiss. So if you have a 10-minute ceremony and one photographer, most likely we're standing in the middle of the aisle for the whole 10 minutes. Yeah. We might go here and get this shot, here and get this shot, and then we're going to come and post because the 10 minutes might not actually be 10 minutes. That's so true. Yeah, it might be even shorter. As a designer and also as a future bride-to-be, I have one store that I cannot stop going to, and that's Event Decor Direct. Event Decor Direct has your one-stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more. It is honestly obsessing how much I can just look through here and I'm like, Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride-to-be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one-stop shop. And especially because the most you know most of the times ceremonies some people have tra like traditional things they do mm -hmm. or they have extra ceremonies that like the whole of the sand pouring into each mm -hmm. other or how they release doves things like that these are important things important for your, things your to team say. to yeah. know yeah absolutely so as you're actually in this process of working with clients what do you see some of the like influential elements happening in the uh, photo and you know video like industry like in terms of weddings and social events like what do you see some of the things that technology how is it like influencing it or not influencing it at all i was i would say social media is a big influencer for the wedding industry not uh, not so much not only the couples but you know photo and video photographers and videographers especially with content creation like doing that behind the scenes like so like on a wedding day, I can't do behind the scenes myself. I'm really yeah. like focused in on what I'm doing. And there's now people that do that, right? Like they're like it's a big trend right now happening where it's um, uh, what do they call themselves? Content creators. Content yeah. wedding day content yeah. creators. Yeah. And they get like all the behind the scene mm -hmm. footage. Mm -hmm. Is that something you're gonna offer on the side? I would like to offer it. Like I ha like on my wedding days, I already have somebody there creating behind the scenes the for myself. For you, yeah. So it's not it's not a big deal for them to just also create some for the couple as well. And it's not and honestly, it's nice. The reason why I say it's nice is I remember my own wedding. Mm -hmm. What we did when we came back home from the wedding is uh, my family members, they're a lot of social media. They're on social media all the time. Mm -hmm. So I went in and I went on all their stories and it was the best thing I did was to watch 
we sat up and watched all of their stories from throughout the day, different angles of the wedding, what was going on, and had a ball. And so I understand the content creation part because yes, we're photo we're we're photo and video. Yes, we might have a team. Well, that takes a process. But we're focusing yeah. on like those main parts of yeah. your wedding day. Unlike the content creator can go around and like get other things that are going on. So I don't hate it. Um, I as long as and I find for the most part the content creator. I don't think it could substitute though the photography oh, no. and video no. whatsoever. So no. Don't, don't let your no. clients tell you other <laughs> ideas. But I definitely think that the wedding content creator for the day of is good for that behind the scenes mm -hmm. stuff yes. going on. And to do those reels with like, you know, like, um, what's the song with the, Beyonce? The, t the, the TikToks they be making with yeah, like, yeah. I'm off to see my husband. I don't, you know what I yeah, mean? No, with with all the, cool the lyrics, the yeah. transitions. Yeah. I think it's fun for that, but mm -hmm. it can't replace or substitute. Oh, no. No, yeah. it's just different quality. It's just a different thing. They're not they're not there to focus on that. It's more the behind the scenes. Let's do this one TikTok trend. Yeah. And and you'll have that so you can post on social media about your wedding day and then in loot and waiting for your photo and video. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's an added element to it. It's not to replace it. Definitely no. I wouldn't think anything that my friends and family posted on social media was going to replace my photo and video. So you're like, no. <laughs> it was just good to look at. I enjoyed looking at it. Okay, good. So now we're going to go over some of the photos that Alejandra has chosen and we're going to kind of discuss the behind the scenes stories and a little bit more so you all can see her work. So I have some of them here. You sent me. We're going to go through them. So we have this first one. Very beautiful. So tell us a little bit about this photo. Um, this was a very sweet wedding um, uh, and I enjoyed it. So they got ready at a Airbnb. Okay. in Plantation, Florida, um, and then got married at a Catholic church. So that was the Catholic ceremony. And then the, the ceremony has a lot of layers to it. It has a lot of layers. And like the Catholic churches, depending on some of them, their their rules. And like, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm all for respecting yeah. any and all religions. I'm, yeah. I'm here for it. But the Catholic ceremonies, like some churches, you can't go past a certain pew. Yes, that is and correct. And so, like, but I feel like, was it their wedding? No, I have been to a, a Catholic church where he was like, y'all could come up on the altar. And we were all like, we're allowed? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that we know across the board we're not allowed to do. But he was like, yeah, you can even stand behind me. We were just like, okay. <laughs> so, that was cool. Um, but yeah, and then they got, they had their reception at the Maxwell room. Um, they didn't have a planner. So kind of some things kind of fell behind. So this was like a couple that contacted you directly. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, and they um they didn't have a plan. So some things kind of fell behind. It was a lot of me going to her, um, asking, okay, do you want to do this now? Do you want to do that now? When if you have a planner, I wouldn't even speak to the couple on the wedding day. Yeah. I would go to a planner. Hey, when are we doing this? When are we doing that? Um, but they're a very sweet couple, and this was after their first look. Um, which was oh, very they did a first sweet. Look. They did a first look. Okay. I love first looks. Um, so we did some portraits after that and the family sessions after that as well so that we got all of that out of the way. Oh, that's cool, though, because I was going to ask you, what style of photography is this? Uh, I would say that's true to color. True to color? Yeah. Very beautiful. It looks very soft. You know, the, yeah. The white is white. The blue is blue. Well, the dark blue <laughs> of his jacket. <laughs> All right, now we have this one. This one. Um, I love photos like this. I love photos that show the couple having fun. Yeah. Um, because then I I could just stare at it and look at it. Um, this I don't this was not during their first dance. They were just dancing. So guests do this weird thing when the couple is in the middle, they surround them in a circle. And they stay like that for quite some time. It's kind of like I don't, it, it's like an etiquette, I think, because as soon as I see someone in the middle that's like the host of the party, yeah, no. it's like for some reason you know that you're supposed to like go on the outside. No, it's I don't know. The weirdest thing, but it's I, like a, I don't know. I, and because it, it's hard to get people back in to continue dancing. Yeah. But I saw at this one wedding where I think the couple had the wedding party whenever that happened to tell guests to come back in. I thought that was the smartest thing. Yeah, because so, because now you just have people. Now you just have a circle, and yeah. nobody wants to go in it to dance. So, but they were just having a good time, a it moment so with happy. themselves. It's yeah, very, it's a very beautiful emotion. Yeah, that's the same couple. Um, so this wedding, what's really unique about this wedding is that is an Indian and Jewish wedding, and they blended both traditions in their ceremony. Really? So kind of trying to have to remember 
each tradition and what they usually do for their cer- for their ceremony and making sure that I capture it all. <laughs> so that was that was interesting I had a second photographer so that was a good thing if I was by myself it'd be a little bit more difficult to capture everything um but it was they had a rabbi and um a priest there so they both did the wedding and it's beautiful I love how it's like blurred in the background it's like it just looks like such a personal Mm -hmm. moment yeah and I love to blur photos so that's one of my things (laughs) this photo this was an elopement so um, they had, we didn't do any getting ready photos. Um, they got married at their church, at his home church. Um, then we went to a local park in West Palm Beach to do their portraits. Um, what was challenging about this wedding, um, it was windy. And as you can tell by her hair. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was going to rain. So we, I had to like hurry up and, and get these photos in before it rained. Um, but she told me she has this as her lock screen. Aww. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful photo too. And yeah. I love the edit on it. This couple, I love their wedding so much. She had three dresses oh. and they were like, she so was the, like a Paris Hilton then who yeah. was, Paris Hilton did like seven changes. Oh my God. That's her. a lot. You, yeah, you could. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. She had this was the, her first dress for ceremony. Then she had another dress when she came in for reception, and then her party dress. And you had to make sure to get all those three. I had to make sure, but I knew ahead of time. So the good thing about this wedding and her, she didn't have a planner either. She had a day of coordinator, which is which is just as good. Um, and I knew all of these things that she was having. She also had ballerinas at her wedding, so I knew everything that was going to happen. Um, beforehand. The, no, I, I was thinking, is this the one that, is it the ballerina that comes in during the ceremony? No, the ballerinas actually came in for reception. So oh. during their first dance. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so this, I love everything about their wedding was very elegant. Um, the reception decor was beautiful. Is the, this at the Pelican? This is the rusty, Pelican yeah, in Miami. In Miami. Uh, yeah. yeah. I could tell that view. Yeah. What sucks <laughs> about this wedding is that it rained all day, so we were not able to do portraits at the Miami skyline like we oh. wanted to. And I was just like, it rained all day. Um, but they they trucked along. It wasn't one of those where they were like, Oh my god, it's raining. It was like, Okay, it's raining. It's raining and we're keep gonna we're going. gonna keep the show going. And like one of my favorite things about this wedding is like he could not keep his eyes off of her. Oh. Like he was even in the photo you captured yeah. that in awe of her the entire night. And I, I love that. I love seeing that. Cause I, that to me, like you guys are really in love. Aww. Yeah. So you, you're, you're behind the lens getting the most magical moments that lasted a lifetime. Like when they look mm-hmm. back at these photos, they're showing like their children, their future grandchildren. It's like mm-hmm. a whole chain of memories. Yeah. Just like with the photo before, um, with any cup of during the re- during the, their reception, I would think that she would be like, oh, yeah, I remember this photo. This is what he whispered in my Because she was telling me all day what he was whispering in her ear, and he was very funny. So, like, oh, this is what he was saying. That's what I want people to, the reaction they get when they look at their photos. It's a pretty photo, yes, but what do you remember? What does this photo help you to remember about your day? Stress. (laughs) (laughs) Stress. Facts. (laughs) <laughs> this one was a request. Um, they were like, hey, can we get one photo? So before I leave any any wedding, I will say, hey, it's almost time Final for me shots. to go. Is there anything else you would like from me? And they was like, yeah, we want a photo on the dance floor. I was like, all right, cool. Um, I had to put my lights back up because I, I had to put them down. And they were just, I was like, well, just have fun. They were having fun and he dipped her and look at her face. Like she's just giggling the whole time. And it's, it's oh. I, yeah, I love this photo. He already took his jacket off. He's like, you know, well into the reception. And they had a great time. It's very nice, Sean. I like how the lights, it almost looks like a yeah. like a sparkled light. This wedding. Um, she was, she really wanted to make sure she got a lot of photos of the two of them. She's like, this is my first wedding. I want to make sure we have a lot of photos. It was an intimate wedding. Um, and I was there, even though it was an intimate wedding, I was there for six hours. I was there for six hours because we did getting ready. We did a first look. We did, um, portraits all over the, the grounds. And then for her, she was like, you know, I want to do some fun ones too. I was like, go for it. 
like I'm a, I'm gonna get what I think you should we should get you know those nice formal classic yeah. photos and if you want to do something funky please go for it I'm yeah. here for it and we did some of those those I don't post online <laughs> oh man no I don't those are for them I was like it's not because they're bad it's only because of of what they were doing so I was just there's like, some like of those like silly that are in between the cult yeah yeah it was yeah so I was like, I'm just that's that's for them um but this one was like I had a second I actually had an assistant with me um and I was like here take this camera and just you know whatever you get um, so that was helpful as well because I got a lot of different angles for their for their ceremony, for their day, really. But this one, they were giving their speech to their guests, and I was just, like, able to kind of, like, because it's so small and so intimate, kind of just walk around right. and do different shots. And so this one, I love this one. I just happened to be there when they toasted. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. It's very, it reminds me, is this in Palm Beach? This is um, what they, yeah, this is in Lake Worth. They call it the birthday cake castle. This reminds me of a classic, castle. the birthday cake. Yeah, it doesn't look like a birthday cake to me, but that's what they call it. It's called the birthday cake. Birthday cake castle. In Palm Beach. Mm hmm On Lake Worth Beach. On Lake Worth Beach, yeah. Is it a house that has a black and white checkerboard for No. The Wait. Yes. I, I think exactly. so. They, I they think renamed so. it. La Casa something something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So some of them say some like some of the photos say birthday cake and some of them say the new name. Yeah. But like, we know from people who have been here. Really? So I'll show you later. <laughs> All right. So now we have fire round questions where you will be answering three questions from here and you have to answer them truthfully and uncut mm. as possible. Okay. And I don't know what's in here, so. All right, I'm pulling them out? Yeah, you, oh. it's, it's. So you, it's my fate. Yeah, okay. it's your fate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we have here. Can you discuss a common misconception you'd like to clear up? Ooh. Huh. That we can edit it in Photoshop. We cannot edit everything in Photoshop. If you are ashy, you will be ashy. <laughs> That's why I like to tell people, especially my grooms, please put on lotion. And I love when I'm doing video and I hear them say, oh, you could just edit it in Photoshop. I said, but not this video. <laughs> we, we, we can't, so let's make sure everything looks good. Just make sure everything looks good yeah. before you do it. I understand mishaps or whatever, but we can't edit everything in Photoshop. And I think AI, with the editing AI is really making it um, unrealistic as to what we can do. Um, and it's just like telling me to remove people that were part of the thing. Like, ah, come on. <laughs> like, yeah. like, but they were there. That's what they, they were standing there. Yeah. They were part of this and to, experience. And to add to the misconception, what about how everyone wants that filter that they use for the Kardashians cameras. And oh, the but they look really glowy. Glowy and soft. and soft. And so, okay, so what you really, what you have to realize is make sure whoever you hire, that's what they do. Because there are photographers that will do it. They will, they will remove the blemishes. They will soften your skin. Um, I will do it. I remove blemishes. I slightly, I like to say lightly, soften your skin. Because I still want you to look like you. Yeah. When it's overly done, you don't look like you anymore. And I don't want that for anyone. Although some people might like it. I just like, that's why I always ask people, please make sure you look at my work and see what I do before hiring me. Because there are photographers out there that will do it. Yeah, they will. That's part of that's that's their work. That's, that's their part aesthetic. of their aesthetic. That's yeah. their aesthetic. Yeah. So I'm not knocking it. This yeah. is just not what I do. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second oh. question. Give me a good one. That's so hard. <laughs> uh, can you share a specific project or accomplishment that you're particularly proud of? Oh goodness gracious. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm proud of a lot of things. Okay, like, I love I, that. I, I absolutely love that. I'm in a space right now where I'm welcoming things and seeing where it takes me. And then at the end of it, when it works out, I'm really proud of myself. Because I, I took that step to go for it. Yeah. Um, even though I probably was like, eh. Now, I won't do that for everything. There are some things off bat, you're like, yeah, no. But there are a lot of things that like I might be shy about doing. Because I'm... In, Generally, I am a shy person. Like I am. I'm so happy that you were not 
your shyness not hold you back from being on today's podcast episode. Right, because that's I was afraid of, my, of that. I was like, please. That's part of my hey, let's do it. Yeah, right? look, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so, but I'm used to public speaking, so that's 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 another thing. It's too. like a double edged yeah, sword in a way because yeah. it's like you're shy, but then you're good at public speaking, but then being the camera. Because I always find it that. You're always behind the lens, mm-hmm. and now today you're in front. Yeah, whenever anybody wants to take a picture of me, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't post myself. <laughs> I will post you, but not myself. Um, but yeah, so anything that I'm just like, yeah, we're going to go for it, and I'm usually proud of, because I'm trusting myself, right. really. Um, and so, yeah, I'm proud of a lot of stuff. I'm okay, proud of good, as you should yeah. be. Yeah. Third question. Okay. Who's the biggest influence on you and your work? Oh my God, so many people. <laughs> okay, let's name your top three. Let's not go through the whole family tree. The top three. <laughs> so many people. Um, so my approach to a lot because I second shoot and associate shoot. So what is that? What that means is that I also work for other photo and video companies Mm -hmm. because I do that a lot and the beginning of my career was a lot of that I am very good at watching what people do and taking in what I like and like what I don't like I'm like yeah I'm just not going to do that that's why I say it's a lot of people right so everyone I've ever worked with has influenced me in some way yeah whether they know it or not I don't even think half yeah. of them know it because I, I, I soak in a lot of information while they're working. A lot of things that I learn when I do my own wedding is watching them work, right. really. Like the little star thing you saw in the photos, I saw somebody else do it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what you got there? Oh, oh, that's how you do it. All right, cool. And I'm been, I've been so fortunate enough that when I'm working alongside them that they, they're not gatekeeping any information, right? They're just like, yeah, this is how you do it. But also, you're, I think you're in a space where you're constantly trying to learn and I you're am. open to growth. Yeah. yeah. And you're like a sponge. And that, that's yeah. so important mm-hmm. because no matter if we're like, I always say that for even all our students or even the people I, I work with, I'm like, even me being 13 years in the industry, I'm still constantly learning yeah. every day. And yeah. I don't ever want to stop learning. I don't either. That's when I feel like you just hit a plateau. And I don't want to hit a plateau. I want to I want to keep learning and keep building my creative my creative bone skills whatever it's called because I want to keep providing the best of me that I can to my couples. Right. Cuz it's not just the photos, it's also me. Like I'm very calm demeanor on a wedding day, like it could hit the fan and I'm like Okay. And they're always looking at me like, what are you doing? A lot of deep breathing. <laughs> a lot of deep breathing because I, I, I can't be an additional storm yeah. to your day. That's not, your experience with me is not going to be great if right. I'm an additional storm. So I remain calm and let's problem solve. Yeah. Let's see how we can do this. But like, everyone has been an influence to me, whether or not as I'm working with them, like I see them working or the YouTube influencers that I watch, um, shoot Pinterest from way back in the day. So it's like everyone has influenced everyone has influenced. Yeah. That's everyone I've come across has influenced me. Okay, good. You did your fire round. Questions really I good. <laughs> you survived them. For sure. So I guess before we get to end notes, what would you say is some of the what has been one of the most challenging things in your business? that you can recall? Um, that That's easy, staying true to me. There's a lot of noise out there in the industry, and and it's not so much like they're coming at you, you're, you're seeing it, right? So you follow your favorite photographer, videographer, you see their work, and like, oh my God, I'd like to be like them, and da, da, da. And it's like really having to stay true to what I want to produce for my couples. That was very, very hard, because I would see these other people, and I'd be like, oh, look at where they are. This, that's where I want to be in my business. Yeah. Uh, maybe I need to change the way I, I, I edit my photos so I can get clients like that. And I just have to remind myself that, but those aren't even the types of weddings I want. I want I want the fun, candid weddings. I want the wedding I did not too long ago where I, the family members were wearing these outfits and I was just like, are they part of the circus? I don't even, to this day, I really don't know. I should have asked, um, but they were very vibrant right and what they were wearing and how they interacted with each other i want those types of weddings because they're they're always so different yeah like those other types are kind of usually the same 
Yeah. Okay. The ones that the people that are really following the trends like to the T. They're really you're just doing what you saw someone else do and yeah. not really being true to you as a couple and what you want your day to look like. So I just had to remind myself what kind of weddings I want and who I want to be as a photographer. Like and it was very hard. I yeah. bet. Yeah. Especially because there's so much noise, like you said. Mm -hmm. And it happens, I think, for all creatives mm -hmm. that we see so much put online. And I always say I'm like, it's a good thing, but the same thing could be a bad thing because mm -hmm. It makes you start questioning and thinking, oh, my God, but this is what everyone wants. Right, it's really not right. it. I think there's there's your people that like exactly mm -hmm. what you do. Yep. I always say I'm going to find my tribe. Yeah. I'm going to find them. They're out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. What would you say to someone that, like, you're working with a designer, right? Mm -hmm. And they want photos of the decor. Mm -hmm. How do you go about doing that? What would be some of the things that, let's say, a designer should approach the photographer with because those photos are the ones they use for their portfolios but right. a lot of people forget that you could just talk to the photographer yeah. and get the decor photos yeah i i welcome it right i don't have any problems with sharing those photos um i'm i'm starting to get better at it like this this last wedding i actually sent them a gallery like a gallery that showcased um their work so that they could use and say hey Here's an image from so-and-so's wedding. Um, you go ahead and use it how you would like. And then I even included, here are all the credits. So everyone that was involved oh, in that good. wedding, here are all the credits, here are all their Instagram. You could just copy, paste it into wherever you're posting it and we'll be good to go. Um, and I'll let you know when the full gallery is ready so you can have more images. Yeah. So I've been trying to do that. Um, I've had them reach out and then I'll say, yeah, sure, no problem. And I send it over. Um, I think the, when, when it becomes tricky is if they if they do more than putting it on their website and social media. So it becomes if it becomes something where it's not to say anybody would do like this, but for like the branding world, if you take a, a branding photo of someone and then they use that photo for a book jacket or a billboard, now those are different rights, right? Yeah. So as long as you're using it for like your website and your social media, you're tagging it, we're good to go. And just, you know, you just ask nicely, hey, I'm so-and-so from such wedding. I was just wondering if you have any images available that I can use on my social media and website. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's just like communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget that messaging them a DM or even an email can go a long way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think nowadays we're, we're starting to do that more as photographers and videographers because the more we share it and tag you, you're going to share it and tag us. So it's like it's almost like we're helping each other. Yeah, advertise. and I think when you guys all do that, that's how you're able to find the vendors you want. Mm -hmm. Because you see someone, like let's say a planner posted and tagged you and then the florist and everything. Next thing you know, a client is looking through and they're like, oh, wow, like yep. who's this? Oh, and they're in Palm Beach. They're yep. close to my area. Next thing you know, you have business. Yep, yep, because whoever's following them might not be following me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not a, it shouldn't be a big deal for them to ask for photos. Yeah. And to close it off, what is one slogan or quote that you lean on heavily that you would say that you live by? Um, You're like, man, why'd you put me on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. So every year I do, in addition to my budgeting, I have a word for the year or a phrase. I love so that. So for the, for the longest time, it was um, oh, uh, burst bubbles. So we, we tend to like to stay in our bubble. Yeah. And like we were talking about before, there's no growth where you stay where you are. Yeah. So I have to burst the bubble and get out there. So that's taken me a long way because networking, like I said, I'm, I'm generally shy. So networking is like, it's, it's hard for me because like, I don't really know these people. Well, How I'm going to have to get you out there because I know a lot. I need to lot. get out there. <laughs> I'm going to take you with me. <laughs> like, How do I start this conversation? But I go anyways and I figure it out. Good, so good. it's, it's, that has taken me a long way because I, if not, I just stay at home. So burst the bubble. Burst the bubble. I love that. And tell our viewers and listeners where they can find you, your website, your Instagram. Yes. So I'm Ala at 914 Photography and Film. My website is 914PF with the numbers spelled out. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at 914PF with the numbers spelled out again. And we'll make sure to have all her social media handles also on the screen. So you're all able to follow. And I want to say thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast today. I feel like you've shared so many nuggets and 
Also, you were so transparent because I think it's so amazing that you started your business and you're doing amazing. Thank I mean, you're you. doing it now full time and your work is beautiful. So thank you so much for being a guest and thank you to all of you that listened and watched today and make sure that if you liked this episode, you comment down below, like it, put a thumbs up and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.